Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm finally going to be doing a video on my birth story. So I had Freya coming up on two years ago, don't know why I keep clapping. <laughs> and I feel like this is me just being able to talk about it and everything without being so emotional about it all. So finally doing a video. <laughs> so I feel like leading up to the birth includes a lot of my pregnancy so I'm going to do kind of a like talk about my pregnancy leading up to the birth and then my birth and postpartum so let's get in the video so I'll start at a 10 week appointment um, you get your blood pressure, your blood stain, everything like that and my blood pressure is naturally quite low so I can get my first ever appointment my blood pressure was sitting at 108 over 62 ish something like that quite like low but not not horrendously low um get a midwife and a buddy midwife throughout your pregnancy and that's who you're supposed to see your full pregnancy like day two so that you get to know them and everything and trust them <laughs> um i seen my buddy midwife and my actual midwife twice, I think each, throughout my full pregnancy. I, every appointment I seen a new midwife and I think I ended up all in having like six or seven midwives. So it was kind of a chaotic, having to explain everything to you all the time, like it just was not fun. <laughs> I did not, I didn't understand why. They said they were short staffed but they're clearly not short staffed if they've got that many midwives to go through. First trimester, I kind of just had like the typical morning sickness, but I was only actually properly sick like two or three times. The rest of the time, I'm very handy by the way. <laughs> the rest of the time was just like bulking, like dry bulking and everything, so just annoying. And then my second trimester was perfect. Like I had a great second trimester. I loved pregnancy during that trimester, and I wish it just continued. <laughs> And then 28 weeks hit and I started getting like so itchy. Like I'm not sure it's my feet but I have scars all around my ankles that are from me scratching and scratching and scratching because I was getting so itchy at night like my arms, my legs, everything. I was going for showers at like five in the morning and everything. It was just so itchy. So I spoke to a friend's mum who's been in the like industry for over 30 years and she helps with teachers and everything like that. And she said that that is a sign of like a liver condition if you get through pregnancy that causes, if it's not treated, it can cause long term damage to your liver and problems in the future. So obviously my 28 week appointment was like a couple of days later. I messaged it to the midwife and she says, is it the pan in my hands so the feet? I says, it's everywhere, it's not really there, but it's everywhere else. And she said, it won't be that then, it only comes there and on your sole of your feet. So I was like, okay, well, what can it be then? She was like, just your skin stretching, it'll just be itchy. I was like, okay, will you find anything in my blood if it's there? And she said, yeah. So she took my bloods because at 28 weeks pregnant, they do bloods as well in that appointment. So then obviously my next appointment, I had a different midwife and I didn't know my results of them. So I asked her, I explained to her and she was like, well, the bloods look fine. So it'll just be your skin stretching. So at this point I'm like, this could not be normal feeling like it's every night and like everyone kept telling me they never had it I was like why have I got it then like this is just not normal so I kind of just continued on with the pregnancy listened to the professionals and just let it be just kept I, I was literally up all night and I slept all day like thankfully I'd stopped working at 11 weeks I say stopped working at 11 weeks I still did some jobs but I just stopped my stable hand job because I don't really want to be working with executive horses and everything while pregnant. Anyway, that's a different story. So I slept all day and just stayed up all night and that's when I did some cleaning and stuff because I just was so irritated so I just got up and move about and try like do stuff and have a bath and whatever. So I think 36 or 37 weeks my mum turned 50. And we went out for lunch with family to celebrate and that is when like I really felt ill. I was like, I don't even know how to, how to explain it, but I was like very 
like I was tired my feet were swollen my legs were swollen like my face was swollen I just didn't look or feel like myself and I know people say that for pregnancy and that's normal but it was like extreme so when we got home my mum's friend came up who's a nurse and I took my blood pressure and showed her and she was like well that's high it was 139 over 92 which if you know preeclampsia is 140 over 90 and anything above you should obviously go get seen so I did have actually have my midwife appointment the next day so I was like I'll wait and speak to her and see and I went in and she took my blood pressure and I told her and she says oh no it's not above average so you're fine but I was trying to explain again like I said I had no midwife every appointment so I tried to explain her and get her to check back in my previous like in my documents and stuff to see my previous blood pressures which was very low um, to realise that it was very high for me but she wasn't really listening so she just kept telling me it was normal and it wasn't 140 over 90 yet it was 139 over 92 so um, I just went home and she says we'll book you in for your next appointment blah blah so I did keep getting seen and then I got to my 40 week appointment and she booked me in for my 42 week appointment at this point I was hoping not to get to 42 weeks but I got to 41 weeks and Kai I woke up that day not feeling too good and I says to Kai I was like just go to work it'll be fine if anything happens I'll phone you and you can come straight up the road like I can meet you halfway the hospital's halfway I'll meet you if I need to like we'll be fine so he actually got in the door at six o'clock and I felt horrendous and I just I did get like one contraction throughout the day but nothing I was just like out of the blue and that was it and then I just felt rubbish the rest of the day. I felt sick but I didn't like have any contractions or anything or what I thought I didn't. What I thought were like just wee backs and hacks because they weren't very painful. They weren't like, they were spaced out enough that it wasn't full blown labour or anything but I was getting them quite consistent but they weren't sore so I just assumed backs and hacks or whatever and I only got one like painful contraction throughout the day. So I went to the toilet and that is when things kind of went south. <laughs> I bled a lot to the point I was stressed, like there was a lot and I know that this far on in pregnancy, like it, it just, it really scared me. So I shouted Kai in, he came in and we phoned my mum and she was like get on the phone to triage and see what they say i think that you you should be up there just now and get everything checked out especially with how far on in pregnancy you're natalie like just don't take any risks so i phoned triage and they said any sort of bleeding they would like to see you so can i go up and just to go straight upstairs because the time it was like obviously like well i went to toilet at the back of six so it was like half six so um downstairs triage would have been closing so just go straight up and they'll see me straight away which she did and she said that I actually had been bleeding quite a lot so I uh, was a hemorrhage so I'd started hemorrhaging at home Um, they put me on the machine and that's when contractions came so consistent I think I was getting them the rest of the night a minute apart for a minute it was bad but all I took that night was a paracetamol to the nurse she was quite like kept coming in and checking if I wanted more and everything but I was like do you know that way you're so sore you just don't even want to even try to swallow paracetamol then I just left it I'm not wanting to take medication either I feel like I should naturally allow my body to deal with it so it was a long long night but 10 o'clock came round and the doctor obviously I'd been checked throughout that but the nurse came in sorry at 10 and said the doctor would want to see how far I progressed is that okay yep she checked and I was at four at this point she says we're going to put you in the morning for ha half an hour just to check everyone's okay after last night's bleed and everything um and then the doctor will be able to speak to you while that's on and we can take it from there so I was like okay so I got on the monitor I was obviously I had to press a button every time I got a contraction and anything like that and they were very obviously consistent so the doctor came in and he had like loads of trainee doctors with him and he looked at the paper and he was like, oh my god, you're getting contractions so consistently. I was like, yeah, and he went and you progre progressed three centimetres in like four hours. I was like, yeah, he was like, right, okay, so we're going to get the birthing ward room ready for you. 
and the nurse will be in to help move you along and I was like okay. So they did I think like 20 minutes later I got moved along and I started the gas and air. At this point obviously gas and air makes you a wee bit loopy whatever so I had said to Kai like I'm kind of zoning in and out you just kind of do the talking and any questions answer them anyone needs to speak to you like just tell them everything. So the birth midwife came in and spoke to me and got to know us and she was so kind she just kept like the whole the whole time she was in the room it was just so peaceful she just kept kept it calm kept reassuring me how good I was doing like she was lovely so she took my put me on the monitor and took my blood pressure at this point she was shocked to see my blood pressure and was not happy so she asked if she could quickly take bloods and get them sent for emergency testing, which obviously, yes, <laughs> which she did. Um, so she took my bloods and she said, took them away and then she came back in. And then things kind of slowly started progressing and the next thing I hear is screaming and shouting, emergency room 18, emergency room 18, help, help, come quick. And then she shouted at Kai and told him to pull, not shouted at him, but shouted towards him, pull that button, the emergency button, which he did. And then all these people came running in. Obviously I'm in, a, in and out of it, so I was like, what the hell's going on? I'm crying, saying, make sure my baby's okay, save her. And then the midwife took me off the gas and air for a minute and says, Natalie, I need you to try focus on me. I've lost baby's heartbeat. Um, we're going to have to break your water. She, like, can obviously see what's going on. So... They broke my waters and it was because she had put in the womb. Obviously she'd ingested it and freeze. So they found a heartbeat again and everyone calmed down and left the room. And the midwife took my hand, she was like, Natalie, Natalie, do you want to know what you've progressed to your all by yourself already? And I was like, What? She's like a six. You've done this yourself. That's amazing. Like honestly, she was great. I don't think I would have been able to have got through it the way I did without her. Um, so she went to go take, I think it was a form or something, into the, the office next door. And she says to Kai, like, I'm going to just quickly nip next door with this. If she feels like she needs to start pushing, pull that lever and I'll be straight there. So she literally walked out the room and my body just started pushing. And Kai's like, should I pull it? I was like, no, no, no. Like, just leave it. It's only once. Wait and see what happens. And then, like, two seconds later, started pushing again. I was like, pull that lever. Did not know what to expect. I was like, oh my god, what? So she came rushing back in, like, oh my god, that was so fast. Um, and then she explained to me, like, as she was telling me what to do, and she explained, they usually give an hour before they have to interfere, just because they get so tired, don't want the baby's heartbeat getting lost, blah, blah, blah. Which, obviously, I was like, I draw on my birthing plan anyway that do whatever is needed to keep Freya safe because at the end of the day that was the main priority for me was her being safe. So things kind of like took a wee while, got in, I think I was a bit in power and she was like Natalie, she's like you need to push, blah blah blah, it's getting closer to time, you're tiring now, I'm going to need to help. She was getting stuck and I was like, no, like I was adamant not happening, which you'll find out why I was, like you'll find out why it was important at the end. Um, so she did have to kind of help a wee bit, just, you know, scissors and instantly Freya was here. <laughs> so we did skin to skin straight away and I held her for, I think it was like 20 minutes or so till I burst the placenta and then things got tense again so when I burst the placenta I then hemorrhaged and the midwife obviously noticed straight away and she says to Kai like don't panic but pull that button and there's going to be six or seven people running in here and all around Natalie so that happened and everyone came rushing in um, the wee nurse came over to me and she was like I'm going to have to put a drip in you to help stop the bleeding um, I'm just going to put it in your arm okay do you want to still hold baby or do you want to give her to daddy and I was like give her to daddy there's no way I can hold her and function with everything that's going on and then yeah so 
Celtic Freya and the midwife, the birth and midwife took him to the bottom of me, like in the wee alcove bit at the bottom. And every time she was doing anything with Freya, she kept asking me, is it okay, you want this done? Yes, please. And it was, she was telling me like, we're putting our first nappy on. Or, well, actually at first, they were clean now, we've got to wear. She's eight pounds five. We're going to put our first nappy on, we're just dressing her. And I was just like, emotional, like, it was just, she was so kind. So, um, the nurses were kind of putting drips in me and everything. And I was just trying to focus on Kai so that Kai and Freya, I couldn't really see Freya because everyone up, but I was focused on Kai. He was watching me like a hawk. He was terrified the full time. He was petrified and no wonder. But um, the doctor was like, obviously stitching up and everything. And he had said that I had a very dangerous internal tear and that the reason the midwife did that was to prevent me ending up ending up in theatre to get you know sorted <laughs> so i'm very grateful that the midwife knew what she was doing exactly and did everything she could to stop it being serious so while all this was going on i had no numbing no nothing i was just on gas and air so this was worse than giving birth this pain was worse and it was it was horrendous it was so bad i can still think about it and oh so obviously that took like i think they were working on me for about an hour and a half to two hours and then i finally finally got freya back in my arms and that's when we got our first picture together, which makes me so sad that it was like a couple hours later. But do you know what? I'm just grateful to have been able to be with her and her in the room. Um, yeah, so it was a very intense little couple of hours. Um, but then the midwife didn't want me going back to the next ward until my results were in. And she knew exactly what was going on. Which I had an idea, but didn't know exactly for sure. She needed to be sure. Um, so she had said to me, I'm going to go speak to the doctor and come back to the minutes and went away. And then she came in and said that she spoke to the doctor and because of the circumstances, obviously I was in through COVID, I was only allowed one birthing partner and there was times of visitors to be allowed up. And the only way, obviously your birthing partner and the birthing ward, no one else. But she said due to the circumstances, I'm able to have my mum or someone come up if I want. Um, which I was so grateful for and straight on the front of my mum. I was like, she's here, everyone was crying, sent pictures and said, mum, you're allowed to come up, we're in this ward. Um, so just come up whenever you can. So mum quickly got showered and dressed and came up. And she came in the room, the midwife brought her all along and she came in the room and I'm like, mum, look at Freya, she's so beautiful. And she was like, she is very beautiful and I know that she's okay though. I'm here to see you and make sure you're okay. And I just started crying, my mum started crying, the midwife started crying, like we were all in tears. It was just so emotional, it was just, emotions were high. Um, and then I stayed, my mum got to stay with us for I think like two hours or something. And then she got ready and left. I think she was up six o'clock to eight or something. Time everything had kind of happened. Um, the midwife came in just before she left and said I wasn't obviously, obviously I was being kept in anyway, but they weren't happy with my levels. So um, the doctor wanted to do bloods in the morning, blah, blah, blah. So that was all okay. And then I got, Kai had to get ready to leave. And as he was get, obviously leaving, I was getting wheeled. So he walked down as far as he could with me until we, me and Freya then continued on in our room, which he was on the bed with me in my arms and they just pushed the cot beside us, bless. Um, and that's when I actually got up for the first time and the rest of the night I was on my own. I think the nursery nurse came in once and it was like, just to check after four hours that she'd ate and I said, yeah, and that was kind of really it. I was breastfeeding and she latched like immediately, she fed perfect. Actually, people didn't believe that I was a first time mum. Obviously I was very young, but they just thought it was like, it just went quite well, which I am very proud of. And I just feel like that is something to be proud of. But also if you can't breastfeed, you don't want to breastfeed, that is not like a problem. Like you do what is best for you and your family. And breastfeeding was just something I felt so like prepared for and 
all five of us were breastfed and um the second older so it was kind of something that had always been around um so it was just i hadn't even thought twice about it. it was just something i just did like i didn't even think about um i know you should probably take formula with you just in case which i didn't do and they say express is like liquid gold before you go for cholesterol but i didn't do any of that i just <laughs> hoped and prayed which thankfully worked um so obviously I got kept in the, I had gig birth on the Tuesday, I got kept in on the Tuesday night and then on the Wednesday I thought I was getting home. At this point we didn't actually have Covid results back yet. Um, we got them done the Monday and by the Wednesday they went back so they were planning on keeping me in my own room um, until they had results. But they came in and said, right Natalie you're moving but they let Kai come in from the first hours which I think is nine o'clock. And he could stay all day because I was in my room myself. Um, so then I got moved ward and the times were half one to half three and like six to eight or something. Um, so I phoned my mum and was like, you're really up from half three to half, half one to half three and six to eight. No, my mum arrived for the half one visit. And my nurse had said to her like, oh, I'm so sorry, she's not getting home today. And obviously I still thought I was getting home because I hadn't been told I was getting kept in. And my mum came in, she's like, oh, how come you're not getting home? I was like, what? I don't, I don't know my anything about it. So I shouted on the wee nurse and she came in and I said to her, this wee nurse that did the like rip and everything, she's so lovely. And she said, I'm not just here by the way. <laughs> she said that I wasn't getting home because the doctor still wasn't happy with my levels and wanted to do the dibs the following day. So we actually did do that. My mum stayed for the two hours and things and then Kai's mum came up the later on time and then the Thursday Kai wasn't obviously laid up all day because I was in my room with other people so he came up at half one so the time half one came I was so grateful to see him like I missed him I missed him and I felt like it was so unfair that he wasn't allowed to be there with me and his daughter like for the first few days like I just felt like it was a horrible situation um for him like he i feel like he missed out on the first few days of interaction with her because of covid and because of the rules and things so that was a very very hard and in my room i didn't have good signal so it would take me ages to answer him he would then get stressed because of everything that had just happened and everything but anyway we got to half one and he came up and someone had said to me are oh, you you're leaving today anyway so you can just stay up until you go we may as well um so then the doctor did finally get around like it must have been about half four and she had said my levels still weren't where they wanted them but they are going down if i go home i need to promise that i'll allow your midwife to come out for five days once i'm home um to double check everything and make sure i'm okay if I see stars, which I was seeing stars and everything, um, then I had to make sure I notified everyone, including my family members and stuff, just so they knew that that was happening. Um, so I'd say to her, I'm seeing stars all the time, every time I move, every time I sit up, like I am seeing stars. Um, she did say she looked back on all my documents from when I was pregnant, all my numbers and everything, and from 28 weeks, I was shown symptoms of the liver condition and preeclampsia. So by the time I went into the hospital it was 41 weeks and my kidneys and liver had actually started the function, like they weren't functioning properly. They started going down, numbers were going down and they were actually shutting down. And that is why I felt so rubbish, why my body was closing down, possibly why I hemorrhaged. Um, so I did get home and I I got up to the door and I said to mum like mum I had preeclampsia Freya's I'm so lucky Freya's here in my arms right now and mum was like Natalie Freya would have been absolutely fine it's you that that's very lucky to be here and I don't know why it still makes me emotional I don't even know why it makes me more emotional like makes me so emotional because at the same time the thought of like how close I was, like it's going to sound dramatic but it isn't actually that dramatic but it's not how close I was to death, like it just, it scared me. 
so it was a lot to take in and I did really struggle I, I still think about it a lot like and when I'm thinking about things in depth I get real emotional clearly you can tell um so it was very hard that was um a lot to take in and deal with but with the support of my family and friends and everything obviously and we got through it but now with any future pregnancies is something I'm going to be absolutely terrified of if it's of something I'm just going to be going straight to the hospital and getting everything checked it's just going to be something that's going to be a fear now a lot because the wife came out and she says she's not from the district she's from a different district um, and no like my midwives were busy and stuff so it was the last minute booking whatever so she came in and she was like oh i'll go get my scales to weigh freya and i was confused and i said to her like oh how come you're weighing freya i was just told you had to be here for me that the health visitor would weigh her next week and she was like oh why am i here for you then and i was like um because i had preeclampsia and i was told that to get out i actually had to have a midwife here for five days and she was like oh none of this got sent to me like i've not got any notes on you or anything so i didn't know this thankfully she's educated in pre-eclampsia thankfully this midwife <laughs> um and she knew exactly what to check for and everything she spoke to me checked everything um and they did come out till the tuesday um the last midwife that came out was actually the one i told about the itchiness the first time and she asked how everything was and if i would be happy with her care next time and that is when i said only if you pay attention to what I'm telling you and what the bloods and everything are showing because the fact that pre was missed, I am not happy and as I should be. So then the Friday I ended up, was my first, sorry, then the Friday the, was the first health visit appointment, the health visit came out, everything was fine. The Friday night I went for a shower and I went to the toilet first and then went to go in the shower and I noticed a lot of blood again. And I was like, mm, like I know postpartum you bleed and everything. This was a lot compared to what I'd had the last week. Um, and I thought just go in the shower and that way it just it'll go away. So I got in the shower and I automatically felt so dizzy. I was like seeing stars. I was ready to pass out. So I did shout on cries best I could and sat in the toilet. And that's all I remember from that point. And next thing I know. I'm getting lifted by my mum and Kai onto the bat onto the hall floor and they're on the phone to the ambulance and everyone panicking. Kai had Freya alone. Um but my two sisters were in thankfully, so one of them panicked, didn't know what to do, she just stood still. Another one came and took Freya and um while well, Kai phoned the ambulance, which it actually was put on hold, it was that busy. Being a Friday night. Uh, anyway, I went into the hospital, they did check and everything and the bleeding had thankfully stopped but stopped itself without them having to interfere but they could see how bad or and stuff it was and um, so I did get kept in overnight and the next day they were going to send me for an x-ray in case any placenta had been missed but because of how well everything had went back down and everything they didn't suspect any placenta or anything to be to have been missed and it was all accounted for at the birth so that it was a very like just a, just in case more than anything but they decided to come to the conclusion that i had an infection in the womb and that was my body's way of trying to help clear it out and tell me about it so i got put on a course of antibiotics for a week and i was still on my iron tablets thankfully because another lot of blood loss was um, not what my body needed i think all in i did lose like close to two liters of blood they were supposed to do a transfusion if I lost I think 1.7 but um, at the time of birth I didn't lose that I think I lost 1.45 or 1.5 something um, so I didn't end up getting a transfusion just in case but I think to be fair if I did it would have helped with my recovery and helped to speed up a wee bit because it took me I'd say now two years this is me just starting to feel back to myself I still do get lightheaded sometimes and I've had my iron levels checked which seems to be okay but I keep getting told they're borderline but not enough to be on iron tablets or anything so 
yeah so that is my birth story <laughs> and pregnancy and postpartum i do want to say that you hear all these horror stories and they are horror stories they do make you scared and i heard a lot of horror stories through my pregnancy these horror stories are real stories they do happen but this does not mean it's going to happen to you my word of advice would be follow your gut and if you feel like a professional is not listening to you or moving forward or anything go higher now anytime i feel anything in any pregnancies i'm going to be going straight to the hospital because they seem to take it more serious and actually acknowledge everything and listen to you so there you go <laughs> so if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe and help us out um, and make sure you check out my channel and come back next week for exciting adventures.